Sicilian defense is a top opening for advanced players. Everyone knows that. But it might not be the best choice for beginners. Because masters understand the reasons behind every move, while beginners might just copy them without really knowing why. And it's much better to start with something simpler that you can play with confidence. So let's dive into the Sicilian and see if it's really a good fit for beginner level players. The first question is, what does c5 actually do? Well, the idea is to control the center from the side instead of directly with e5. So when white pushes d4, black can trade the c pawn and end up with more pawns in the center. Now, to see how beginners handle the Sicilian, we can look at the Lee Chess players database with millions of beginner games. The most common move after c5 is knight f3, a natural developing move. And we will get back to it, but let's check out some of the other moves white tries. Now, the second most common move among beginners is bishop c4, aiming to attack f7 and deliver a quick checkmate. However, unlike in the e5 setup, black can easily defend here. The bishop gets blocked by the e-pawn and is just waiting to be challenged by d5. White is certainly not happy here. Another frequent move is d4, often followed by an early queen development, which allows black to develop at white's expense. That said, d4 isn't always bad. It might turn into the main line with knight f3 and knight takes d4, or switch to the smith mora gambit with c3. But beginners usually don't know these transpositions, so d4 typically turns bad for white. Now, let's look at knight c3, which is a simple developing move and nothing else. Here, we shouldn't rush with knight f6 just yet, because if white plays e5, well, the knight might have to retreat to g8. Therefore, we should play d6 first. Now, in this position, white usually develops the other knight, and we continue as planned with knight f6. In most cases, white opts for bishop c4, and after knight c6, they castle. And the main task for black now is deciding where to place the king's bishop. It can go either on e7 or g7, and g7 is better, I think you would agree, because it gives the bishop this long beautiful diagonal. If white plays d3 and then bishop g5, black simply castles and there are no weaknesses in their camp. Now let's move on to some other white tries. A passive move like d3 doesn't challenge black at all. You can comfortably develop your knights, push e6 or d6, simply you cannot make a mistake. Finally, we have a meaningful response, c3, aiming to counter the main idea of the Sicilian, establishing a strong center. And this is something that the c5 pawn alone cannot stop. However, this move comes with a small drawback. Now pause the video and see if you can figure out what it is. Take a close look at the pawn on c3 and notice that it's blocking the knight on b1 from developing to its natural square. Now this gives black the chance to strike in the center with d5, followed by centralizing the queen without being harassed. Now this approach can be a bit complex and goes against the common guideline of not developing the queen too early. However, it shows that there are exceptions to the rules and you should never follow them blindly. Sitting on the seventh place, we can see a ridiculous move like queen h5. White is asking to lose some tempi and black should probably make them happy with a move like knight f6. 
or defend their pawn on c5 first. Either way, white's queen on h5 is just a silly piece. Now let's look at the main move, knight f3. As always, we should focus on our king side first. But if we play knight f6, white can push e5 and cause some problems. So it's better to play d6 first. The main line for white is d4. Now if we recall the main idea behind this opening, black should simply capture on d4 and play knight f6. Now it comes with a tempo on e4, so white develops and defends at the same time. Now here you might encounter a dilemma, as many suggest playing the top-level GM move a6, entering the famous Nidorf variation. But what's the point of this move? Of course, if you understand it, just go ahead. But if not, I'd suggest focus on developing your kingside bishop first and getting your king to safety. With that in mind, if you choose e6 and bishop e7, your bishop won't be very active, and the other one might end up passive as well. Instead, I think it's logical to go for g6, as we did in another line, if you remember. Then after bishop e3, you can place your bishop on a strong central diagonal. What we have now is the main variation of the Dragon Sicilian, also known as the Yugoslav attack. Now, as a beginner, you might not face this often, since many opponents will deviate earlier. But it's good to be aware of this tricky line white might try. And don't worry about learning all variations. My goal is to show you how to handle it without stressing over memorizing each move. For instance, here we simply castle, and white plays queen d2, aiming to exchange the dark square bishops and weaken our king. Well, their plan is to castle long and launch a pawn storm attack and checkmate us. But there's no need to panic, just continue with developing the other knight. If white plays bishop h6, they'll eventually lose a piece on d4. That's why castling long might help, since the rook will be supporting the d4 knight. However, black can slow down white's plan for quite some time. Pause the video and try to find the move to obstruct white's bishop h6 idea. Well, trading on d4 disrupts white's queen and bishop battery and gives us time to develop the last minor piece. I know this might seem advanced for a beginner, but think of it as learning how to defend and attack in positions with opposite side castling, rather than just memorizing an opening. For example, here you'd want to bring out the queen threatening a2, then develop your f8 rook, and consider launching an attack on the enemy king, the mirroring white's plan against us on the king's side. And now you will see why this black setup is called the dragon. Because there is a stunning sacrifice coming up. That's why hit the pause, take a moment to think, and then share your solution in the comments below. Now, if you grasp the importance of controlling the center, you will understand the key purpose of the Sicilian. The main line is exciting and finding the best moves for black is, I think, fairly straightforward. However, I think if white opts for less optimal lines, the pawn structure can start to resemble the one in the English opening, where queenside expansion becomes a common plan. And that can be more complex and definitely less thrilling for beginners. White can also try a few other variations. As we saw, the Alapin aims to control the center with two pawns, and Smith Mora Gambit involves a pawn sacrifice for rapid development. Well, there is also Grand Prix attack, which we didn't see. It focuses on a strong assault on your king. A good news is that these variations aren't common for beginners. However, you'll start encountering them as you advance. For these reasons, altogether, I give Sicilian Defense with Black 4 out of 5 stars.